Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm just in the workshop today. It's a long weekend here in New Zealand. It's a little overcast, but it's still plenty hot. And um, I'm just filling in a couple of jobs that I didn't really get around to this week. And I've been going through some of my emails and I just recently had a question from a customer. And what I usually do, I go back through my old videos. I'll send a link to that and I fill in any gaps if there's parts of the question that aren't really covered in the video. I did the same thing for this question and I noticed that although I remember filming it, I never uploaded a video answering this question in the past and I figured rather than just explaining it on the email, I'll do the video now and then I can refer back to it if I need to later. Uh, I definitely know that I, I shot this video, I can even find a file on my computer that has a corresponding name but I cannot find the files anywhere and it has definitely not been uploaded. So going to try and cover as uh, cover it as quick as I can today uh, I don't have that much time but these guns while I've been developing them I did notice that going up to eight millimeter in these ceramics just gave it a little bit of an edge now it's not a massive difference but when you're trying to get a little bit more performance out of these it was actually significant enough to bother going through and actually uh, supplying these with eight mil tips Anyone who's tried to build one of these guns or has a sandblaster that uses these and has been trying to use it for vapor blasting will know that the largest available is 7mm. And that's what's raised a few questions with these. I have not heaps, but a few people asking where I get the 8mm eight, eight ceramics. And I don't actually buy them, I bore them out. It's a pretty simple process. Quite often you'll find that they are not drilled very concentric. Uh, well, not drilled, they're, the way they're cast means that the hole in the middle is not exactly concentric. So usually I'll do them in batches and I do them on the lathe. And when I do them slow, not always. If it's really bad, it'll still show through. But if it's not that bad, it'll usually clean it up quite nicely on the lathe. A lathe isn't exactly crucial. If you find a nice one, relatively concentric, you shouldn't have too many issues doing it by hand. So what you're going to use is just one of these little diamond drill bits. Use the core type rather than uh, there's another type that's usually got like a pointy end on it, glass drill. But um, these are used for drilling glass or ceramic tiles, that sort of thing. Um, and they're pretty good for doing this. So when you've used them a few times, they'll end up a little undersized. Uh, this one here that I've got for an example is when I measured it just before it's actually about 7.8 mils so that still will give it a bit of an edge when they're brand new though they'll go to 8 mil or usually a little bit over so that's just something to keep in mind now the way I'm going to do them here just as a demonstration you're going to need a I'll bring the camera over as I'm doing it but just a an ice cream container or something similar just to keep a bit of water in because if you get these bits too hot they will, they will get damaged and they'll be dulled and you'll be there forever. But it's usually a pretty quick process. Just before I go through and I show that one other thing, if you go out to eight millimeter and it's still not quite enough, um, generally for a setup that big, I probably would go to maybe a larger gun or a, a different type. I've actually designed a slightly different type for the plastic cabinets that uses a larger ceramic. But for these, if you do want to go a little bit further, you can actually go right the way out to 10 mil. Now it's a lot harder when you're doing them by hand. Um, going from 8 mil up to 10 mil is just a little bit harder on the drill bits and will create a bit more, a bit more heat in it. So you've got to be extra careful. But I have used them like that. It is possible you can run a 10 mil bit through them and get quite a, a decent extra flow. And as long as you're not running aluminium oxide um, or crushed glass, aluminium oxide is the worst, but crushed glass will wear faster as well. Or some of the harder garnets. If you're just using glass beads, these will hold up pretty well, even though they're quite thin. So with that being said, I'll move the camera over here and I'll just give a demo. Um, I'll try and get it right first time and I'll try not to cut the video just to give you an idea of how long it takes. Um, so if you give me a second, I will move the camera and I'll get set up. Here we go, that's simple, it's just a jar uh, or a, um, a container of water. You want to be able, it doesn't have to go right the way through, but you want to be able to get enough water onto the bit while you're drilling. Uh, and I'm going to start from the tapered end on the inside there, 
just because it's a little easier to get it to run a little bit more true down the middle. So um, simple as that, chuck it in the into the container, drill hold it obviously as square as you can to the hole you're drilling. And then I usually start slow because on the inside, you see it's kind of deburred. The way that they're made usually leaves quite a nasty burr on the inside there. And if you just go too hard from the start, um, sometimes it'll start a little bit off center. So just start slow and then you can actually be pretty harsh on it. Um, but make sure you're letting off occasionally just to make sure there's plenty of water and cooling going on in there. And remember as it gets to the bottom, uh, it can actually catch. So I usually lift it off a little bit off the base. There we go, let's just pop through it. And there we go, that easy. And just to show you, there we go, so a little bit under eight mil. I don't know how well you can see that. The uh, I've got the zoom a little bit out just to get everything in the frame. But it's that easy, nice and quick. And you can see, even though I did that by hand, it's pretty well concentric. So, like I say, you can go right the way out to 10 mil if you want. But that's just a nice, easy way of, um, of getting that out a little bit. I haven't found any nine mil bits. Um, if I had, I'd probably give that a go just to see if it um, had any edge over the, the eight mil. But um, just goes to show, it's very easy to do. It doesn't take long at all. And um, if you've got a few spares, it doesn't matter if you mess a few up, you don't need a lathe to do it, you can do it by hand. One other thing, these ceramics, you're not gonna be able to really see there, uh, maybe if you've got a good eye, but um, they actually come in an oversized and I didn't know this for a long time, so this is one of the original ones. It's a little bit narrower. You can, I can see it by eye from here. I don't know if the camera is good enough uh, to show you, but um, these here I usually drill off the top of my head. I think 16.5 millimeter, uh, where I'm boring out the retainers for the for the guns. And these here I think are a little bit over, like 16.8 or something. The other thing is this little shoulder here won't fit down the inside of a half inch fitting. So another thing that you can do, I've done before, I put an M6 bolt down the middle of it with a nut and then I just spin it up on the drill. And then with a the grinder, I just get a, a, diamond, um, a diamond cutting wheel in the grinder and I just lightly uh, touch that as I'm spinning it up on the drill. And if you've got it relatively centered on the drill bit, uh, on the bolt, sorry, going on the drill, you should be able to pull that shoulder in a little bit. Usually this, uh, the step on the back here is fairly well concentric so as long as you've got that locating in the gun a bit if that shoulder isn't exactly true right the way around because it's been a little off centered while you've, you've ground it that's not a big deal there's still enough shoulder on there that will that'll help seat it and lock it in place and as long as this this part's true to the center bore usually you'll get away with it so they are a little bit forgiving. They're very hard to work with if you're just using regular steel bits. Like I'll, I've seen people trying to run a regular high-speed steel drill bit through it, it just won't work. So you're gonna need one of these diamond diamond bits. Same thing, you can use a diamond, uh, a diamond wheel on a grinder for trimming that if it's not gonna fit. But usually if you get a decent quality one, they're, they're a little bit more undersized and um, you shouldn't have to touch that shoulder, you won't have to dress it at all. So. Hopefully that answers uh, all the questions. I don't have to go through and, and make addendums to it, but every now and again, I will get will get some questions based on where I get these, and hopefully that's answered everyone's questions. And uh, with it being up on the, the YouTube channel, um, it'll it'll be searchable, and um, no one will have to send through emails and wait for me to get back to them, which recently I haven't been that great on. Um, if I can, I'll usually link people through to one of the YouTube uh, videos or a post that I'll put up somewhere. But for now, that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you do have any more questions based on ceramics, um, on the tips or the different setups that I use for the guns, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I'm still fairly good at getting to the comments as long as I'm notified of them. And uh, yeah, I think that covers everything for today. Thank you for watching.